Thank you, Dorval. And now it's my pleasure, as I noted before, we're going to hear a little bit more about the Riverwalk project, which is just fantastic. And Michelle Woods from the city is here to do a Pecha Kucha style overview of it. Michelle has more than 20 years of experience in municipal government working for the city. She is currently a project manager for the city's Department of Fleet and Facility Management, where she is working on ensuring that the Chicago Riverwalk continues to grow as a viable city asset, allowing uninterrupted access along the Chicago River from Lake Street to the lakefront, about a mile and a quarter in length. Previously, Michelle worked at CDOT, where she was working in the engineering department and involved on the design and construction of more than $450 million in infrastructure projects. So she brings with her to her current role a real deep understanding of what it takes to make projects like this happen. Michelle is a graduate of DePaul University where she received a degree in urban studies and French. So let's welcome Michelle Woods. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm really thrilled to be here. Uh, my mentor, Luann Hamilton, is sitting at the table, and um, I'm just I'm a little bit shy because she'll be scrutinizing my every word. <laughs> but I do uh, want to join Commissioner Scheinfeld in welcoming all of you to the city of Chicago. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, we'll be talking about the Chicago Riverwalk very quickly because I know you have a full program this afternoon. Um, most people know the city of Chicago because of the lakefront. We have 26 miles of Lake Michigan on our border, uh, and few people know that we have this river. Uh, you see it cuts through the middle of the city of, Sh of downtown, and then it branches off to the north and south branch. If you have a chance during your stay here to go to some of our older, more historic buildings, that Y symbol is uh, symbolic of the city of Chicago and representing the river with the main branch, the north and the south branch. The project we just recently completed is right there, pretty much in the heart of the city. We um, completed earlier portions, uh, as the commissioner had mentioned, uh, the old rail line that's right where we're at today came up to what we call the um, pre-phase one section, where it says pedestrian and bike paths. That's the section literally across from where we're sitting in the, in the Swiss Hotel. And we completed phase one earlier, and then phase two and phase three were completed just recently. Uh, phase three wrapping up just last year. Uh, implemented segments prior to the pre-phase one, again, we had the um, section uh, that was part of the Rails to Trails program that happened in the 1970s, uh, but then we actually got an appropriations when Congress still did appropriations, uh, and got $5 million to build the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Again, this is something that as you're walking around the city, uh, there is a 7-Eleven, in case those of you <laughs> use those kinds of indicators, uh, right on the corner of Wacker and Wabash, and there is a median there that has a planter now. And originally, that was the city's Vietnam veterans reflecting pool. So you can imagine veterans coming and standing in that location, trying to have a moment, trying to reflect on their situation there, uh, and buses and cabs whizzing by. So we built this uh, memorial. It was dedicated on Veterans Day 2005. And again, like I said, we had an appropriations bill from Senator Durbin. I point this out because um, a couple of veterans said, how dare you? Once again, you're disrespecting the Vietnam veterans. We're being put to the basement of the city. As the commissioner said, Wacker Drive is this double-decker structure. It was a Daniel Burnham idea to have promenading and nice car traffic on the top, and then the basement type activities, garbage and deliveries happen on the lower level. So to put a memorial along the river was kind of controversial, and frankly, some people were offended. And we had to really say, this is going to be the heart of the river walk. This is going to be in the center. You'll be able to have ceremonies. You'll be able to be out of traffic. And what's nice is you do have this vertical separation where you can, uh, the, the noise of the city is separated. The next portion that we completed, our phase one portion, was the uh, Michigan and the Wabash Underbridge connections, which kind of connected to the rails to trails to the, the Vietnam Memorial and really made it accessible, really kind of hoping the plan was that this little baby step would be the catalyst to help us get additional funding going forward. 
And this is what the uh, phase two and phase three portions look like prior. The reason I like to show this, this, uh, these before shots is because um, it's not just a continuous path. It is a continuous path, and that's great, but also, too, you notice the vertical separation. And you see that if you had gone to any of these previous blocks and sat there and tried to have a view of the river, you were still very, very separated for, from it. So not only is the phase two and phase three portion of the river walk uh, east and west connection, but also an up and down. So when we were looking at the design for this, um, we have these magnificent bascule bridges, the Chicago-style bascule bridges, more movable bridges than any city in the country. Uh, Pittsburgh does have more bridges than us, so congratulations, Pittsburgh, but your bridges don't move. Ours can move up and down. <laughs> So the whole idea is that as you come underneath a bridge, uh, you have this experience of you're in this new environment. And we wanted to use different river typologies to kind of celebrate the river. Uh, so we celebrated uh, first with the Marina Plaza. And again, this is immediately the block immediately west of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. So it's a little bit more formal. Then we have the Cove, uh, which is slopes down like a cove. Uh, then we have the River Theater, we have a water plaza, the jetty, and the river bank. The key that brings them all together, though, of course, is the underbridge connections. And so here we have these uh, paths that go underneath all of the bridges. And then, um, again, we do have open grade decking in our bridges. And so to protect people, we came up with this architectural feature, which is the canopy. And if you do do the tours uh, later this week, um, or if you go down there on your own, please take a selfie and make sure you put that on, on social media. It's uh, quite the thing to do. <laughs> so this shows uh, the section between State and, um, and uh, Dearborn. This is, again, the, the marina. This is across the, the street from the, or across the river from the Bertrand Goldberg Marina Towers, affectionately known as the Corn Cobs. One of the things about us in Chicago is we take things like Cloudgate and call it the Bean. We take things like <laughs> marina towers and call them the corn cobs. Um, so this shows this vertical separation, again, as you get closer and closer to the waterway. Uh, so you see that we have a path. We have access to the river. Uh, we have boats that can tie up and dock here. And then again, too, you see we have uh, seating areas for people who can sit and just watch the river go by. What is kind of hidden in there, but you can kind of see next to the guy in the red shirt, is we have these cutouts. And that is for ADA companion seating, so that if you have uh, people who that have wheelchairs for access, they can back their wheelchair in and have very respectful shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder, uh, views of the river with you as you uh, enjoy the views of the river. We have a um, wine vendor who is uh, operating, and in fact, as I was walking over today, people were sitting there drinking wine, and I just don't know who has a job where they can drink wine at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but... That might be my next career. <laughs> so um, anyway, what we've seen is that people have overflowed from the wine vendor and actually used the, the benches for seating. I also point out, too, the trees that are there are also in trenches. So there's a giant bathtub underneath the, um, the pavers that are there. So again, we can have a longer life of those trees. And that, again, goes to the connection, not just of the east and west, but the vertical connection. And as the trees get bigger and bigger, you see the people on Wacker Drive will notice that they're walking through the treetops. This is the cove area, and you see it slopes down. I want to point out the people sitting on the rocks because that comes back a little bit later for our discussion. Um, this, again, is a gentle slope. This is more designed towards people who are paddling in kayaks or canoes. Uh, as the commissioner mentioned, Mayor Emanuel's done a lot to promote boathouses on the various different sections of the river and that you could paddle from those boathouses to this area, get out, stretch your legs, have a drink, get back in your boat and paddle back. Uh, and so anyway, this is the place where you could have that kind of activity. Again, because the rocks are so crowded with people sitting there, you can't see. We also have cutouts again uh, for uh, companion seating uh, for people in wheelchairs. And again, this is something that we've noticed that is a lot of people with mobility challenges are avid paddlers. So we wanted to give uh, that resource for them as well. Uh, this is a block called the River Theater. It's between Clark and LaSalle. I very humbly call it Michelle's Woods. 
Uh, as you see, it's this nice little urban forest that will be growing out of the infrastructure. This is another one of our locations where we have an ADA accessible ramp uh, that brings people from that Upper Wacker experience down to the Riverwalk. The other thing is because we don't have any vehicular traffic in this location uh, and we are not using uh, salt, we're using other types of de-icing uh, options, uh, we're able to retain all the stormwater in this area and then use it for irrigation. This is the water plaza, and this is a zero depth fountain, and the fountain has different light displays and different water jet displays. This has been an area that has been very, very popular with uh, young kids and um, actually older kids as well. Uh, and they be, are able to play and frolic in the, the water on a hot day. But what's also interesting about it is it's designed so that the water feature can continue in the winter months, not there as you see it, but along the water wall along the path, that will slow the water down to a trickle and that it will become a nice sculpture. And again, something very interesting to look at as pedestrians continue to use the path in the winter months, uh, that you'll have this interesting ice formation take place. So we're gonna be interested to see how that um, works for us this winter. Uh, sadly, last winter, it never really got warm enough for the ice to form. So we're looking forward to see how that works. This is the jetty. And even though I did name the River Theater after myself, um, humbly. This is actually my favorite block. Most of the construction is you drive sheeting, you backfill, and then you put your architectural features like the icing on the cake. This particular block is built on columns that go deep, deep underwater and deep, deep, deep into the foundations. And we have these floating gardens. And you see we have these columns and these floating gardens rise and fall on the columns. Um, we also have left this area open. This was an area this last summer where we had um, partnered with the Chicago Park District, and they brought in a number of inner city school kids to come and try fishing for the first time. Uh, and it was adorable to see all these kids uh, because they were saying things like, it was my lifelong dream to fish, and they're eight. So, <laughs> you know, time to come up with some new things on your list. But what's happened, and again, too, I, I um, kind of set it up this way. Uh, but on these columns, we actually put fish infrastructure, and we worked very closely with an organization called Friends of the River. Uh, and what they've done is help us come up with these different kinds of fish infrastructure that are out there in the world and helped us uh, come up with the plan for this. But on these columns, as you go deep underwater, different levels, because different species of fish like different kind of levels of the water, we have these things like hula skirts, and that's exactly what they look like and it's fabric, and microbes come, and they start to live on the fabric, and then the fish come and eat the microbes. Uh, and then, of course, you know, after a romantic meal, there's fish lunkers for spawning, so they can do that. And then, of course, then we bring the inner city kids in to go fishing and capture them. <laughs> it's the circle of life. <laughs> Um, this is actually an event that we worked on with um, the City of Chicago Sister City program. And so the sister cities that are with us um, all came out and did uh, different things, like Paris brought wine, Warsaw brought vodka, which was great, by the way. Um, India brought a uh, uh, Bollywood-type DJ, and they did this program for six weeks. And I was with the CDOT landscape architect, and she actually, and this was before she got into the vodka from Warsaw, but she said, it's like even the plants are dancing to the music. Um, but of course, it's because the plants are floating, and anyway. So we had a great time with that. That was a very fun event, a series of events. And this shows you some of that fish infrastructure that I was talking about, where you have these curtains, these hula skirts, and then these lunkers that are then attached to the columns at various levels. Uh, and then this is our final block, for now, anyway. Um, and this is the section between Franklin and Lake Street. Again, you see another vertical access location. Um, and what's significant about this is this is that Y point of the river. And this is where the city of Chicago actually, actually across from this section, was where the city of Chicago actually got coined the Windy City. This was where the Republican convention for Abraham Lincoln took place, uh, and they were talking about the long-winded politicians. So I think I'm getting a little long-winded. Uh, but another thing we have a lot of in Chicago uh, is rain. 
And so you see here we have a storm event that happened about two weeks ago where we got four inches of rain in about 20 hours. Uh, and you see that the river level rises. So when we designed this, we knew that there were going to be flood conditions. One of the things about these columns is that you see, um, well, you can't really see from the photo, but they do have numbers on them. So normally the city of Chicago, the river is at a minus two CCD, Chicago City Datum. The path there is at a plus two CCD. And then they open the locks to the lakefront at a plus four. So when we did this design, we knew that there were going to be conditions when we have our 100 year storm every year, which I think we need to rename that storm, uh, that we would have conditions like this and we would have to make sure that the river was, a, or the path and the plantings were able to uh, survive under these kinds of environments for periods of time. And so you see uh, one of our vendors, again, <laughs> dealing with submerged conditions. Um, what happened was he had the storm on a Saturday afternoon. On Sunday, the water was submerged, but the locks were open. And by Monday, um, the path was no longer submerged, and we were able to get crews out there. The majority of the path was opened. This cove level, because it slopes down, was uh, cl closed until Tuesday. Uh, for cleaning, but I do want to point out that strip in the middle there, uh, that's the rocks. So you get a sense of just how much the river can rise uh, as a result of, of these big storm events that we do have and that we do have to plan for. But in spite of that, our vendors are doing great. Um, originally, our Chicago Park District managed the concession program prior to us getting um, the TIFI loan that paid for phases two and three. Uh, and we were getting about a um, million dollars in so in gross revenues. This is not the city's take home. I just want to make sure that's clear. This is how much the vendors grossed. Um, as part of the um, program to get funding to build the phase two and three portion, Mayor Emanuel had talked with Washington, D.C., and we got a Transportation Infrastructure Financing Initiative Act program. And it acts pretty much like a mortgage. So we have a 35 year. Uh, loan at a low interest rate, and we need to pay off the loan um, with revenues generated from the project. Now, I point this out because most people say, how did you pay for a uh, $100 million project in this day and age? And that's pretty much how we did it. And I really do think the mayor should get a lot more credit for um, really his innovation and in thinking outside of the box and how to fund a program like this. As we think of our park space, we don't think of them as economic development indicator or developers and, and drivers, but they can really be those things. Um, and as you see, in 2015, we increased our uh, revenues, and again, not our revenues, revenues from the vendors total were 4.6 million. Uh, and then last year, we were all the way up to 9.4 million. Now, what's interesting about this is that our figures only up through August were already at 8.7 million, so I'm anticipating exceeding the 9.4 this year. Um, October, or September was very, very nice for the city of Chicago and the, the vendors were very, very busy. Um, and we do still have vendors open even though it is chillier and cooler. Um, the wine vendor does have these geodesic domes like Buckminster Fuller. So if you wanted to go in there and have a glass of wine like apparently people can do <laughs> during the day, uh, that's available. And some of the other vendors are still are remaining open as well. Again, we also did programming this year and that the Riverwalk is not only just a pedestrian path, but it's become a destination. And you see we have some uh, young fishermen up there. We also did um, what we call the fish parade. So you see we had uh, some of our Chicago Public Schools marching bands come by and they would perform with puppets that had fish, fish heads. Uh, and they would march up and down the Riverwalk, creating a sense of place and destination. The vendors all got together and did a program called Second Tuesdays. And again, the second city, second day of the week, second day of the week of the month, that kind of thing. Um, we came up with this event and Commissioner Scheinfeld was kind enough to let us blow fireworks off of her bridges. And um, nothing burned down that she knows of. Again, speaking of uh, economic development, one of the things Mayor Emanuel discusses quite a bit is uh, how the Riverwalk project is its catalyst for all kinds of other economic development along the, the river system. Um, as the commissioner mentioned, we have the Wanda Vista project right, right around the corner here. It's a billion dollar project, I mean, it's very significant. 
Um, the other big project that just opened recently is the new Apple Store. So if you are walking along Wecker Drive, you'll see this brand new beautiful development. And again, this kind of shows the history of the city where um, historically we had our back turned to the river and now it's something that we're embracing and really trying to capture and make sure we have views of as we go forward. <clears throat> the other f and thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned to you is that with the Metropolitan Planning Council, which unfortunately looks like it got blacked out here in the slide, so sorry about that, you guys, um, and the Chicago Architectural Biennial, we have this River's Edge Ideas Lab. And this is really interesting. This was, um, this was funded by the Driehaus Foundation, and what they did was they gave nine different architectural firms all th three, three, diff three of the same locations. And what they had to do was come up with designs for each of those three locations. So those of you that have rivers or waterfront developments and are looking for design ideas and inspiration, I really encourage you to go uh, check this out. It's at 78 uh, East uh, Randolph. It's literally across the street from the um, Chicago Cultural Center, which is having the biennial. So again, those are some extra things you can do in case you have enough transportation stuff and want some, some other stuff to look at. But this is a really interesting idea where you had all of these different groups come together and come up with designs for how to really capture the space along the waterway and really bring that back to the people. And as the commissioner said, reclaiming space or building additional space for public use at its highest and best level. Again, um, thank you so much for coming to Chicago. I feel like this was a movie trailer. I am doing uh, two walk uh, shops uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon and then um, Wednesday morning. So if you want to hear more about the Riverwalk, please join us uh, there. Thank you so much.